And to those of you who have been watching Dallas and New York, we welcome you to the post game as well. Greg Gumbel along with Terry Bradshaw, an outstanding football game at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey this afternoon. The Dallas Cowboys defeating the New York Giants by a score of 16 to 13 on Eddie Murray's overtime field goal. So now the Dallas Cowboys have clinched home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs and the playoff picture now looks like this. The Cowboys and the 49ers will have some time off. Next week, the New York Giants will host the Minnesota Vikings in one wild card game. In the other wild card game, it'll be a rematch of Green Bay and Detroit. The Lions winning today. This game will be played at the Silverdome as today's was. It'll be the Packers and the Lions. The first round buys belong to the San Francisco 49ers and to the Dallas Cowboys, who by virtue of their victory today over the Giants have, have the home field advantage now throughout the entire playoffs in the NFC. And uh, the Dallas Cowboys, I'm sure it helps them an awful lot to be able to go into Giant Stadium and win this game yeah, on the road. It does, Craig. The, the real key here is you look at this game and you, and you realize that the Giants took away Alvin Harper. He caught two touchdown passes the last time. Emmitt Smith, they tried to take away, but couldn't. Because the one thing the Cowboys are always going to do is make adjustment in their blocking to get Emmitt free. The other thing is that the Cowboys champions always seem to find find a way to win. And today in a hostile environment coming in here with their weapons knocked down, Emmitt Smith injured, their defense rose to the occasion, their special teams almost cost them, but their running game and a good play, smart play by Troy Aikman, the quarterback, was, really was the difference in the game today. And don't you know the Cowboys will love to get that extra week's rest for running back Emmitt Smith, too. 16-13, the final score. Let's send you back out to Giant Stadium where Leslie Visser is standing by with uh, one of the heroic Cowboys. Leslie? He is that, Greg, and as the players came off the field, they were yelling, we're going home and we're staying home in Dallas. Congratulations to you, Troy. What was the difference today? Well, you know, it's hard to say, to be quite honest with you. We jumped out on them early. We had some things go our way in the first half. Uh, the second half, defensively, they really picked it up, and we struggled a little bit. And then uh, our defense was fortunate. was able to make some plays when they had to. Uh, and then Eddie Murray, you can't say enough about the job that he's done for us since he joined the team. They did a good job on Michael Irvin, and Emmett still was your go-to guy there at the end. Well, they, they really uh, play a defensive scheme where you're not able to get a whole lot of big plays up the field. And we knew that, and we took some shots. We were able to get a couple things and, and get Mike the ball on some things but but still we knew we had to come in here and run the football and then try to be patient with our passing game and take the underneath stuff and and that's what we did and uh, and we were able to keep the score down would you not relish the fact of facing them again in a couple weeks <laughs> Well, you know, it's tough enough playing a team twice in a year, and uh, if you play them a third time, uh, it, it makes it extremely difficult. And right now, we're just fortunate that we, we have the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. We've got to buy next week, and uh, that's all we can ask for, and then we'll see who we play. Get some rest, in Dallas. Thank you, Troy. Congratulations. Back to you, Greg. All right, Leslie, thanks very much. So the... Uh, Dallas Cowboys will go home and stay there for the rest of the playoffs in the NFC. They uh, beat the New York Giants today by a score of 16-13 in overtime. The other divisional championship decided today was at the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, where the Detroit Lions knocked off the Green Bay Packers by a score of 30-20. to Sterling Sharp, everybody's watching him. He set the record again, broke his own record for receptions from last year. Finished the regular season with 112 with that catch. And Brett Favre, this is when things were going well for Brett. One of the few bright things today was this call. This is a screen pass, Greg. You like to run screens against zones. Here's Edgar Bennett on the screen, gets down. One of the, one of the few times that the Packers outguessed the Lions. But Favre had interception problems again today. Four interceptions. 17 points on five turnovers by Green Bay. You will not win any games when you do that. Meanwhile, Eric Kramer continuing to perform well. This is an eight-yard touchdown pass to Rodney Holman. And then with time winding down, it was another pick against Favre. Another pick, little play action, turns around, Brett gets some pressure. One thing young quarterbacks have to learn, you have to be patient in big football games. You cannot force things. Brett Favre has one big habit, and that is he forces too many things, 24 interceptions this year alone. Hats off also. I'm going to go back over to the Lions again, Greg. Coming into this game, the Packers had 33 sacks in the last nine games. And the offensive line today of the Lions, big old goose egg, no sacks. You know what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is we've seen a Detroit Lion team gain some confidence, especially with Eric Kramer at quarterback. And as you say, the defense has stepped up a notch too. Eric Kramer won't make a lot of mistakes. Not a strong arm guy, but he makes good, smart decisions. They revamp the offense a little bit, more three wide receivers. He knows that offense. He likes it. And he'll stay in there and he'll make good decisions. He's very much like Troy in that Troy Aikman in that he'll make the right decisions. He'll take a two-yard pass rather than try to force a 10 or 12-yarder. He'll 
take what defensive give them, and that is the real key, I think, to the offense of the Lions. Key here is they've got to stay with it and keep it going and don't turn their back on Eric Kramer if he should have a bad quarter or a bad half. All right, Terry, 30-20 to 20 was the final score at the Silver Dome. Now, elsewhere at the Hoosier Dome, the Buffalo Bills beat the Colts by a score of 30-10, to 10, and in so doing, they claimed home field advantage throughout the AFC playoff. Ted Marchabroda looking on. Thurman Thomas will fumble into the end zone. Bills lose an opportunity here because Jason Belzer of the Colts recovers. But then, at the other end of the field, same thing happens. Rodney Culver fumbles, and Henry Jones will track it down over there. And there goes an Indianapolis chance, but Thurman Thomas does get one. Thomas coming off left side, very much like Emmett Smith. He has the ability to go left, right, or up the middle. Good, good decision. And then Jim Kelly, one-yard touchdown pass to Pete Metzelars. Buffalo, a team that has gained some momentum in the latter part of this season. They finished the year 12-4, and four, and it really doesn't <laughs> feel like the Bills have had that good a season. You know, it? the Bills are an amazing team. You talk about resilient. They have really overcome so many adversities. Their offense has not been as consistent. They're not as high-powered. But you know what, Greg? They're doing it right. They're playing better defense, and they're getting a good, solid running game. You know, not putting 55 points on the board. But I think this is the kind of team, this is how you win in the National Football League. You win with good running game, you get a better defense, and you have smart quarterbacks and receivers, and the Bills have all of that. I know folks are going, don't say it. Don't tell me they're going to be back. But it looks like now Buffalo right, has the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Come on, Houston. Yeah, they do. Meanwhile, take a look at what's happening at Foxborough. Bill Parcells and the Patriots giving the Miami Dolphins all they can handle. This game is tied in overtime. Pete Stoyanovich kicked a 24-yard field goal with six seconds left to send this game into overtime. How big is this for Miami? A win or a tie, and they are in the AFC playoffs. If they should lose, they'd need some help in order to make it. But the New England Patriots are fighting the Dolphins now. They're in overtime, and they are tied at 27. So the AFC playoff picture as it stands right now, the Pittsburgh Steelers are one of the teams that's still very much alive in the picture as well. They beat the Cleveland Browns today 16 to 9. Bill Cower, yeah, a little disagreement on the sideline, but Vinny Testaverde gets stripped of the ball here by Levon Kirkland and Joel Steed of the Steelers recovered. And then it was Neil O'Donnell's turn for the heroics. Yeah, Neil O'Donnell had a fine day, broke a whole bunch of records I thought I could keep for a while. There's one to Eric Green. So here's what happens. The Pittsburgh Steelers, they earn a wild card with a win and losses by a couple of other teams. These are the teams that are in, in the AFC. Buffalo in the East, Houston in the Central, Kansas City, champions of the West, and the Denver Broncos. Those are the teams that are in. There are other teams still alive, the Raiders and Miami. All they need to do is win, and they're in. The New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers, they need a win, and they also need some help. Pittsburgh will earn a wild card win with their victory if two of three teams lose, the Raiders the Dolphins, the New York Jets. We'll take a timeout here. We will continue with more of the post-game show as the playoff battle continues in the National Football League. Stay tuned. Search. Search. What is it, boy? Hey, I think we got something over here. Good dog. Everybody thinks programming a VCR is so incredibly complicated. Record Channel 3, Sunday, 7 p.m., 8 p.m. What's the problem? Magnavox, the only VCR with Smart Talk Remote. Smart, very smart. Who makes the only TV with a smart sound feature, which ensures your volume will stay at normal levels, even when something like this comes on? Magnavox. Smart. Very smart. No use shouting, old man. Your world is about to become a little smaller. Those important to you, a whole lot closer. Because now, across the U.S. and Canada, leading cellular communication companies have come together to create the most extensive cellular service ever. So now, staying in touch is as simple as a phone call. Hello? I've been waiting for your call. Introducing Mobile Link. To order service, call 1-800-995-4000. Think of all this as a large block of ice. 
think of this as a chip off the old block. Coors Light's aged ice cold. So when you think of ice, think of the silver bullet. The only way to chill. Don't say it. Sexual harassment. Don't write it. You're a racist and it's that simple. Don't even joke about it. It's nutsy It can cost you plenty if you use the wrong words. That was the phrase that got me in trouble. Politically correct. An all new 48 Hours Wednesday. Welcome back, everyone. We remind you, coming up next on CBS Sports, the Visa Champions Cup from Deer Valley, Utah. You'll see such a parade of former Olympic alpine skiing medalists and World Cup champions, including Franz Klammer, Billy Kidd, Tamara McKinney, and Franz Weber. That is next here on CBS. At New England, the Patriots and the Dolphins tied in overtime. The Dolphins have just intercepted Drew Bledsoe of the Patriots. A win or a tie puts the Miami Dolphins into the postseason. The Kansas City Chiefs beat Seattle today by a score of 34 to 24. In Atlanta, Phoenix beat the Falcons by a score of 27 to 10. The Rams lead the Bears 3-0 in the first quarter. Denver leads the Raiders 10-0. That's also a first quarter score. For Terry, for all of us here at CBS Sports, see you later. Purdue Boilermakers next Sunday on CBS.